the, lo the logical development and execution of a plan to deal with potential losses. So that is the risk management associated with bank. Usually the focus of the risk management practices in the banking industry is to manage an institution exposure to losses or risk and to protect the value of its asset. Now, there are three credit risk when bank sanction then market risk there are uh, there is a cycle inflation and deflation so that is market risk and operational risk at a bank level now most of the banks now they are having core banking so core banking it is entire computerization so hackers they may create a problem still and there are uh, chances and it has happened with the bank that funds have been transferred by hackers or sometimes ATMs are being uh, broken and cash is being withdrawn from ATMs. So that is the operational risk. So how to minimize this operational risk? Bank should have authenticated software. Then they should have good backup technical team so that they can address the issue if such thing happens to the experts. So please remember if you are asked that state the largest risk, state the largest risk associated with bank. So please do remember credit risk, market risk and operational risk. Now, the next slide, there are four types of risk. And what are these four types of risk? Number one, strategic risk. For example, competitor coming into the market. So that is strategic risk. When competitors are entering into the into market, then it becomes difficult for the existing uh, company to run there, to run along with their function because of competitor. Why? Everyone. Because if more and more uh, banks come in the market, then what happens? There will be healthy competition and because of this healthy competition, ultimately customers are benefited because there will be competition amongst banks and then they, they will see that who is providing timely services and uh, accurate services to their customers. So that kind of competition, because of competition, this may happen and this is always good for customer. But since it is a risk that competitor coming to the market, bank may face problem because they may divert their customers or bank may, may not be able to attract new customers. So that is why it is a strategic risk. Second risk is compliance and regulatory. So basically it comes from is uh, Arvia curbs <laughs> then while uh, granting license to the bank a lot of conditions are being put by Reserve Bank observe by newly established time, time to time they have to give several reports which are to the apex bank that is reserve bank of india even if there is a npa npa stand for non performing assets if there is a npa that npa is 
also observed by Reserve Bank of India. And individual bank, they should. And then third risk is financial risk. What is this financial risk? Interest rate rise on your business, loan or non paying customer increases. So, loan becomes costlier. So, such costlier loan, EMI, customer on time, or they may they may not pay at all. Also, so this is the risk because of interest rate and operational risk. This is. Sometimes there is a breakdown in system, or there, there, there is a breakdown in their computerized network, or theft of equipment. Whenever there is a theft of equipment, then their important password and information may be steal by uh, hackers, and then the bank exposed to the operational risk. Now, next one is credit risk. Now, what is this credit risk? Credit risk is the possibility of a loss result or failure to repay a loan. Possibility of a loss resulting from a borrower's failure to repay loan or meet contractual obligation. This credit risk is basically whatever loan sanctioned by a bank that borrower may not pay uh, EMI, which consists principal amount and interest amount on time to the bank. And this way, the borrower is breaking contractual obligation. Actually, he's supposed to pay on time EMI. But he is not being. There are a number of reasons, maybe personal uh, reason or maybe their attitude. But this is known as credit risk. Traditionally, it refers to the risk that a lender may not receive the own principal and interest, which results in an interruption of cash flow and increase cost of collection. So, because of this, what happens? The cash flow of uh, cash flow of bank get disturbed and cost for collection also gets increased because then bank will have to uh, make phone call or they, they will have to they put their representative to the borrower house or borrower office or so that uh, legal expenses so this way the cost of for collection increases of bank so this is about credit risk and the accounting effect of credit risk. Now, the next risk is liquidity risk. What is this liquidity? Liquidity risk, it is defined as the risk of incurring losses resulting from the inability to meet payment obligation in a timely manner when they become due or from being unable to do so at a sustainable cost. Now, we have what happened? So liquidity. So long banks receive their EMI on time, liquidity is ensured. The moment uh, defaulter cases increases, then what happens? The flow of money also decreases. When flow of money decreases, then bank payments are affected. Whatever bank payments are there, maybe payment of rent, salary, wages, uh, payment towards repairs and maintenance. These all day-to-day -day expenses get affected. So this is about liquidity risk. So we have discussed credit risk as well as liquidity risk. So out so far.
risk, what is liquidity risk, and what is credit risk? Any doubt? No, sir. Did you understand? Yes, please. Did you understand? Yes, sir. Now the next next again from the examination point of view, if you are asked, list out the risks which are associated with bank. So please do remember this, these are the type of risks which are associated with bank. That is credit risk, liquidity risk, and now next is interest rate risk. Look at this. This is also one of the type of bank. Now what is this interest rate that changes in Prime. Interest, rate, interest rate gets changed. The market has impact on the. So here I have put it in the US or other world market may reduce or increase the market value of bond you hold. So because suppose if interest rate goes down, so naturally whatever deposits you have made in the bank, their deposit interest also be decreased. Decrease interest rate, you will not be able to get uh, expected return from a bank. So this is about interest rate risk. When there is a change in interest rate, it carries effect on profitability of a bank. Another type of risk which is associated with bank that is counter is counterparty risk is the probability that the other party in an investment or credit or trading transaction. It's part of the deal and may default on the contractual obligation. So counterparty means the associated party with bank. Suppose if a bank has given loan to the uh, individual, so the individual becomes counterparty for a bank. Now this counterparty, what is counterparty is? The individual person, if he is not paying EMI on time, or if he is not following contractual obligation, then such incident is known as counterparty risk because counterparty having this kind of action not to pay EMI to the bank. So that action attracts counterparty risk. So one of the most effective ways to reduce counterparty risk is to trade only with high quality counterparties and with high credit ratings such as AAA, etc. So here what you have to do, if you want to really reduce counterparty risk, then you have to have a scrutiny of your uh, customers. Have proper scrutiny, uh, go through their uh, financial status. You may take their uh, last income tax return, file income tax return, get their asset liability statement. And on the basis of that, you will come to know whether the person having high quality uh, financial standing or lower quality financial standing or average financial standing. If he is, I will say low, then such person's loan application definitely will hold by bank. So they will not sanction. But the person who is having good amount of rating, like say AAA, AAA which stands for a, a very outstanding rating. So such person definitely will be sanctioned loan.
so that bank loan is into the safe hand and bank will ensure that timely payment from such high quality counterparties so this way we can minimize counterparty risk how to minimize counterparty risk simply you have to evaluate individual about his financial status uh, his uh, liability his assets income on the basis of this information that is his regular income uh, assets and liability of that person will definitely indicate you whether the person having sound position or he may become in insolvent so that way can be checked out so these are all the types of risk which are associated with bank let me show you again this is one counterparty risk then interest rate risk number and number 4 four type of risk which are associated with bank number 1 credit risk number 2 liquidity risk number 3 interest rate risk and number 4 counterparty risk please do remember in examination if it is asked you need to list out this bank that is interest rate risk so these uh, things are expected in our answer so this was about all type of risk now we will go to the next part of risk management in banking and that part is npa management npa stand for yes do you remember what is npa npa stand for what In non performing asset non performing assets correct non performing asset and what is non performing assets the asset which default by investor asset means whatever loan given by bank to the individual that individual is not paying emi to the bank and when he defaults emi such such asset is known as non performing because it is not performing when it perform if you are your your customer if he is paying regular emi then it is performing asset when you are your borrower do not pay emi to the bank on time then such loan is known as non performing asset because it is not performing so naturally uh, rbi keeps eye on this npa management because rbi is very much concerned with this npa if more and more npa happens with the bank then one day bank may face severe problem and because of this severe problem bank may close their operation and the moment bank closes operation it has it has very negative effect on their <coughs> deposit holders because deposit holders have kept their amount in the bank with uh, high confidence that bank will uh, pay on time and when bank suffers from this kind of issues that is npa then bank not in a position to pay or to honor request from their deposit holder and as you know there are uh, small scale deposit holders there are medium scale deposit holders there are high scale deposit holders also high scale deposit holder generally they don't bother about this npa more or less middle uh, level deposit holder they can manage even if a bank np increases they, because they have several kind of investment so they cannot but a person who is having a very small amount of income and whatever income he has he has uh, kept in a bank in the form of fdr and if bank np increases then it gets affect on the bank deposit also bank may not be able to pay deposit sometime so such small investors are badly affected because of this 
non compliance of payment of to remember that there has to be proper compliance in respect of making payment towards deposit and bank should also ensure they should also curb they should also observe new techniques and ways to recover amount from uh, borrowers who have become default or np amount there should be strategy at the bank level that to recover np amount now what is the strategy for recovering np amount bank can forfeit the asset of that person because what if loan amount is higher then definitely bank has taken some hypothecation from person so such hypothecation can be forfeited and that forfeited asset can be sold out in the market and that money can be a deposit and then remaining money can be given back to the borrower so this way the npa can be uh, reduced now let's go ahead these are the types of npa okay so what is this term Non performing assets that have that have been passed due for anywhere from ninety days to twelve months with a normal risk level. Now, a person who has taken loan and from last ninety uh, days, ninety days means three months to twelve months, that amount has been due from the borrower. So it means last uh, between three months to twelve months, a person has not paid to the bank EMI. So such asset is known as standard asset. It is standard asset because the past due is between ninety days to twelve months. There are they are in place that have been passed due for any anywhere from ninety days to twelve months. Now, substandard asset. What is this substandard? After the understanding is standard. Standard asset period is ninety days to twelve months. Now, in the respect of substandard asset, the period is more than twelve months. So, this is standard asset less than twelve months, and uh, substandard asset more than twelve months. There are some uh, borrower who have taken loan from bank and they are not paid EMI. They have not paid EMI to the bank for more than twelve months. So last one and a half year or maybe last two year, they have not paid anything to the bank. So such asset is known as substandard asset. And what is standard asset? Uh, default cases between three to twelve months, between ninety days to twelve uh, months. That is nothing but three to twelve months. And substandard asset means defaulter have defaulted payment for more. One and a half year, or maybe one point twenty five full day. Now the one, but bank is little bit doubtful. Loan will be the very financial condition of a borrower, considering that uh, thing or fact. This means declaring doubtful debt. Bank should ensure about the person ability. Then loss assets. Now here, whatever assets of the bank in the form of In the form of loan, that loan, sometimes one person has taken loan, but from the day one, the person is 
nowhere. Bank is not able to trace that person. So when bank fails to trace person, so whatever loan given to this person, bank declares as a loss assets, loss assets. So because these assets bank has lost. So that's the meaning, loss assets. So this was about risk management in relation with bank, risk management in banking. That is uh, in respect of deposit as well as in respect of uh, uh, loan, loans and ad advances. And in uh, corporate or in practice, you might, you might have heard that in last one and a half year, some uh, banks, they have face very severe problem in regards to the recovery of loan. Now recently, uh, many, uh, uh, actually these are not bank, but some uh, private parties, they have developed mobile app and through mobile app, uh, loans have been sanctioned. Suppose if loan amount is say 5,000 rupees. So such organizations have recovered four to five times more amount of the sanction amount and still they are chasing their borrowers to pay uh, extra amount. Let's say for example, suppose if Mr. A has taken 5,000 loan, so such mobile app uh, companies have recovered 20,000 from that person. Loan amount is 5,000, but they have recovered 20,000 and still they are asking person to pay. And if they do not pay, then literally such mobile app companies are harassing to the borrower. So, this has happened recently in last week only. So there were uh, several complaints lodged by borrowers with police department. And now the search is continued. Police are conducting their scrutiny, how it has happened, who are the culprits, and who has done this kind of say act? There was one of the student who did a summer internship project on the NPA. NPA. And do you know what he did? He collected IAS information that how much loan is being given to industry at a personal level. And uh, then he studied that whatever loan given to that person, how he has repaid the loan. Surprisingly, in last two years, as everybody knows, because of Corona, most of the companies and establishments were closed and people were not having sufficient income in their hand. And because of that insufficient income, they could not pay bank EMI, resulting in PA. So NPA increase. So this uh, pandemic is also one of the cause or reason why NPA has increased in the last uh, two years. But now, if you consider today's situation, situation, now most of the banks have improved their recovery management. So people are now responding, they are paying.
So this was all about uh, unit number This is all about unit number three. Just let me ensure this is This is all about unit number three. That is risk management in banking. Next lecture, we will start unit number four. So, so far we have covered three unit. And as I told this third unit of risk, which is devoted to the banking sector. Bank, which is the area of finance. Similarly, insurance is also the area of finance. Now in insurance, how risk management is being handled. So in insurance, what happened? There is a collection of premium. And in the tune with that collection of premium, there is also settlement of claim. Maybe health insurance or maybe fire insurance or maybe automobile insurance. So there is a settlement cases. Now this settlement ratio, number of uh, policy holder and number of uh, claim holder. So there should be maximum policy holder and claim order should be minimum. Then only bank survives, vice versa. If claim order increases and policy order decreases, then bank may not have sufficient amount in their hand. And because of that, not having sufficient amount problem in managing insurance business. So in risk management is also important from the insurance point of view. And insurance, there are actuaries, actuary. They are known as actuary. What is the job of actuary? Actuary, he designs premium of uh, insurance. He also defines the risk area, which is associated with insurance company. So in this uh, risk management in banking, we have learned four types of risk. And these are strategic risk, compliance risk, financial risk, and operational risk. And we have also learned the meaning of credit risk. Credit risk it is the thing. But the bank, when uh, sanctions loan to a person, and then person becomes default to repay that loan or to meet contractual obligation. That is credit risk. Then liquidity risk. It is defined as the risk of incurring losses resulting from the inability to meet payment obligation in a timely manner when they become due from being unable to do so at a sustainable cost. So that is liquidity risk. And then we also discuss interest rate risk, interest rate risk. These are all the examples and types of risk associated with bank. Interest rate risk, it is the risk that changes in the interest rate. This particular risk where there is a change in interest rate. Then counterparty risk. Counterparty risk, it is the probability that other party in the investment, credit or trading transaction may not fulfill its part of the deal and may default 
on the contractual obligation. Now, one of the most effective way to reduce counterparty risk is to trade only with high quality counterparties. So, a person who is having such person should be given a loan. The rest of the people who are, who are not having, say, good uh, rating standing, good rating, trade rating, simply their application uh, should be rejected. Because even if you sanction loan to such people, these people may not pay bank on time and then bank NPA may increase. So it is better not to be after increase in uh, borrower, but whatever borrower is there, whatever borrower, borrower size is there, that borrower should be a quality, quality borrower. They should have some ethics in making payment of uh, EMI to the bank on time. Or maybe sometimes bank creates awareness in the, in the minds of uh, uh, borrower that how they should Planted with the bank. So that way, bank can also have strategy to improve the relation between bank and borrower. Then, after, after counterparty, we have learned about the NPA management. And as I told you, that NPA means when bank sanction loan to individual but individual is not paying emi on time to the bank then such cases such such cases are known as sorry such cases are known as npa and there are certain types of npa one is <coughs> standard npa and the second one is substandard NPA. What is standard NPA? Standard asset. These are the NPA that have been due between 90 days to 12 months and with a normal risk level. Substandard, it is little bit uh, riskier. It is abnormal risk. It is what? Abnormal risk. They are NPA that have been passed, that have been passed due for more than 12 months. So more than 12 months, they haven't paid EMI to the bank. So, such assets are known as substandard assets. Then, doubtful dates. Doubtful dates. This is the date which is estimated by bank itself that whatever loan they have given to this borrower. Suppose if 1000 uh, borrower list is there. So, from 1000, if 100 people, anyhow, whatever uh, efforts taken by bank, but they are not giving any uh, positive response to the bank. So such responses are known as doubtful dates. But now again, RBI has made a mandatory that whenever there are doubtful dates, individual banks should observe carefully because on this number and on the basis of number, Reserve Bank of India makes ranking, uh, they categorize uh, standard assets and substandard assets. Now the company who are having more amount of substandard assets, their NPA naturally will be at a lower lower level, and then uh, maybe depositor if they study this kind of information, then they may not keep amount with such banks because already their doubtful rates and uh, loss assets have been increased. So. It creates fear in the minds of uh, deposit holders that this particular bank has a high amount of such and asset. Anytime bank may close their operation, operation and if bank closes their operation, then our, our amount will be, we may not be able to get back our amount. So that kind of fear, that kind of impression is created against the bank. So therefore, we must observe the standard asset and substandard asset. Actually, standard assets, there are bright chances to recover standard assets, but 
substandard assets as the period increases then it becomes very difficult for bank whether bank is able to recover such assets from these people or they will have to foreclose their account and foreclosing account it is nothing but the total loss to the bank and such loss is being adjusted against profit now suppose if present profit if it is not available and if bank has a reserve and surplus earlier profit so from earlier profit bank will have to manage this substandard asset payment of substandard asset so that substandard asset ratio will come down and then bank's npa uh, rating may enhance will increase then we also discuss about the loss assets so this was all about risk management in the banking sector in uh, next uh, lecture we will start unit number 4 so today i declare that our unit number 3 is over now we are left with two unit number 4 and 5 two units are there and i think uh, maybe by next week we will uh, complete our risk management syllabus next week definitely means by end of this month we are in a position to complete our syllabus so expected question from the examination part of it that hint also give, being given for unit number 3 again i repeat expected questions like say what are the type of risk associated associated with bank in respect of asset liability management then what is the npa there may be short note on npa so in npa please uh, remember you have to give the meaning of npa and then types of npa so basically there are four type of npa standard asset substandard asset doubtful debt and loss assets so do may write this four type of npa now if you visit to any bank you find 
in the every branch in the particular corner of uh, branch they write information about npa uh, level npa level what kind of npa what is the position of npa so this is mandatory for each and every bank they should display they should highlight this information on at the entrance of bank so everybody will come to know about the npa so it is mandatory so hence for whenever you go to the bank just observe your branch what kind of boards are displayed there have they displayed npa information that is non performing assets then what is their uh, outstanding amount what is their rating because uh, they get rate on the npa management maybe single a double a triple a so this kind of rating is being given by reserve bank of india and then bank ensures that to minimize the npa so bank who is successful in minimizing npa so their rating is always high so that bank proudly they mention and they at the entrance of bank that there is a zero npa zero npa it's a good sign of bank means no dues pending from borrower all the borrowers are paid that is known as zero npa and sometimes there there are yeah, ratings are given for npa sometimes there are percentages are given percentages are also given so this uh, both way npa is being reflected in a bank maybe in terms of percentage or maybe in terms of rating and people come to know about npa of bank so this is little bit serious issue in npa management in respect of bank because if npa increases which is not beneficial to the bank it is always harmful to the bank so bank may suffer losses in future time and if this losses increases then uh, one day that losses will force bank to close their operation so closing operation it is the loss of country also because such banks if they close their operation then it creates uh, rumors in the market and this rumor has negative impact in the economic development of nation so that should not happen so for that purpose bank should monitor they should strictly observe the movement of uh, borrowers bank should also observe that while sanctioning loan all cases should be properly scrutinized they should be thoroughly checked and if they found the particular lacuna that lacuna should not be neglected by bank in fact they should consult their customer and get the relevant information from customer if bank satisfies then it is the authority of bank it is in the discretion of bank whether to sanction loan or not to sanction loan but bank should know this information before they give advance before they sanction loan to such company so they should be well aware and if they do not well aware then what will happen the rate of npa will increase increase rate of npa will have a negative impact on the indian economy banking sector and then people loses their trustworthiness on an over bank so that losing trustworthiness which is not good for uh, any bank so if bank wants to keep their performance at a high level at a quality level they must have appropriate npa management they should have the proper study of their uh, risk what is the risk now as you discussed financial risk then uh, compliance risk operational risk and strategic risk these all four risk should be monitored by bank properly and if 
bank observes that particular risk which is risky for a bank say for example operational risk because of this what happens then hackers may take undue advantage of a bank so taking undue advantage means it is totally lost to the bank because we know that in bank there is uh, cash there are some precious that are like silver gold so this kind of assets are being kept with bank so such assets may be misuse by system so in order to avoid this misuse each and every bank should identify this four type of risk what are the risk and how much risk they are exposed to i am not saying that all bank are having this all four type of risk at a high manner there are few banks who have control this all four type of risk there are some banks but there are many banks who are still struggling to maintain this four type of risk at a minimum level so that efforts are still continue and in future time also it will be continue as we progresses then uh, complication also gets increase now uh, because of this now, nowadays upi payment then mobile app uh, bank loan so these new innovative things are entering into the market people are getting benefit out of this uh, innovative product but same time this because of this innovative products bank account holders are also getting exploited by such people so exploitation may happen and if exploitation increases then people they loses trust on an over bank so losing trust over on an over bank which is costlier or which is not good thing for bank any bank whether it is private bank or government bank or cooperative bank they expect that at a branch level npa should be monitored and the npa should be controlled so every branch whether it is bank of maharashtra or state bank of india or punjab national bank whatever bank is there you name the bank bank see to minimize their uh, risk and these are the four type of risk every bank dream is to minimize this all kind of risk so this was all about unit 3 so before we end uh, today's session if you have any doubt or a question you may ask in the in this part of unit number 3 any doubt would you like to ask anything about unit 3 yes please am i audible are you there please are you there any doubt so far yes sir any doubt no sir okay then uh, good night we will uh, meet in the next session and we will start unit number 4 thank you